Hey guys, we're starting our shelter in place color pencil drawing stream. And if you're joining, thanks so much for joining. This has been a lot of fun. We've been doing this uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday uh, at 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. If you're watching the replay, I want to say a special welcome to you as, as well. And and um, join us again if you can. Christine, how are you? Good to see you over here. So thanks for joining us. All right, so we're going to do this mouth, and we're going to do it on pastel mat. So I'm going to use probably more colors this time than I did in the past. Um, because I was trying to limit myself with a limited palette to a 24 set of the Derwent Lightfast pencils. We're still going to use some Lightfast pencils from Derwent, but we're going to mix in some others as well. I've also got some other paper that I thought about using. So this this is Stonehenge paper, so I've got a warm here. not sure you can see the I've written it on there. And I've got a white, and then I've got cream. I often get confused <laughs> between the cream and the warm when I have it in the pad. Hey, Harry, thanks for joining. Good to see you over there. And Somia, thanks for joining as well. Um, so if you look at these very closely, and I'm hoping it'll show up on the live stream, the warm is more yellow. And the cream has a little more red in it. So those are the, the differences there. So when you're wondering about that. These are all good, very good uh, portrait colors to use. So, so I'm using white um, pastel mat by Claire Fontaine. And I accidentally bumped it a few places here. Sometimes that happens um, with my pencil. Okay. So, the reference is over there uh, on the website if you're uh, wanting to uh, download it and uh, join in with me and draw along with me. Welcome to do that. If you don't have pastel mat, that's, that's okay. You know, you can just use um, white paper, cotton paper, or whatever you have on hand. There's not a whole lot of difference uh, in the techniques that we use from time to time, so... Hey, Linda, thanks for joining over there on YouTube Live. Okay, so um, if I'm going to lay this out, I'm first going to start out with my Prismacolor Call Erase Pencil. It's totally erasable, so if I uh, decide I don't like a mark, I can go ahead and erase it, uh, and that's what that, you know, that's what that affords me. Yeah, Harry, that's that's interesting. I think I've heard that from somebody. So, interesting um, perspective. I I don't know. I've not. Um, I don't. I don't recall running into that problem where Harry's saying that uh, he finds that white pastel mat doesn't take as many layers as uh, the tone sheets do of pastel mat. I'm presuming. Okay. I'm not sure how far up this will go. Uh, somewhere in there. This will come down here somewhere. This will be over here. This edge will be somewhere over there. I'm not real sure yet where that would be. This is uh, often uh, difficult to figure out where where that is as well. So, uh, thank you, Hasib. I, I'm guessing that's how you pronounce your name. Thanks for joining over there on YouTube Live. 
appreciate it. Okay, this arches up quite a bit right in here. Comes back down. Uh, and if this, we'll say this is our corner. Move that down just a little bit. Right in there, maybe. And then I think you can see here where the smile was um, was started and the upper lip uh, stuck to the bottom lip a little bit as they were beginning to smile. Um, so we could leave that out. You could <clears throat> just draw that very dark, <clears throat> pardon me, to show uh, the recessed area of the mouth right there. Either way, um, I think it might be distracting if I left that in, but I don't have to. I don't have to decide that right away, but pretty soon here I will. Um, Hasib. It's like you're, uh, I think maybe you're asking if it's, if I'm doing this in watercolor, I'm not sure what you're asking. Uh, no, this is going to be colored pencil, though, if that is what you're asking. Okay, this is going to be pretty flat right there. This comes down here somewhere, probably. I could measure this with my pencil to get some idea how far down that is. That's about right. Somewhere right in here. Goes down a little lower than what you might think. Okay. There we go. Hey Donna, how are you? Thanks for joining. So, Hasib, uh, I'm using a call erase pencil by Prismacolor um, at the beginning. You, know, you can tell here this is the uh, separation between the two front teeth is offset from where you might imagine that it would be. Um, right here between where that indentation there is of the philtrum for the top of the lip and the bottom of it of the lip where that pushes out against this area. So often we think that that, um, that separation is going to be right there. And it's not always there. So it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, not sure where that other tooth is yet, but somewhere, somewhere in here. And and then if I if I don't add that little bit of skin that's that is um, sticking against the bottom lip, man, that needs to go up a little bit higher. It looks like um, if I don't add that, then I may need to add a little bit of that tooth that would be back there. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter, and we could put. I think what I'll do is I'll. Put the lips together just a little bit more right there in that area. Um, if I were doing the, the actual portrait, then I would, um, if I were doing the entire portrait, uh, depending on how big it is, then I probably would would change that just a little bit. Only because it might be distracting otherwise. So Hasib, you're from Pakistan. Awesome. Very cool. It's not available here. Uh, okay. Well, we're going to switch here in a moment, and we're going to use uh, traditional colored pencils here in a moment. Okay. Hey, Melanie, thanks for joining us out here. Okay. Now, that's 
probably probably enough. I just want to look around a little bit. This gets really thin over here. I'm trying to ignore some of the shadows and values because um, there's a big um, you know area right here that's a dark value, and I want to try to ignore it at the moment. Uh, there's a tooth that comes down right in here. A little bit of a shape right there. This tooth, it extends. I'm looking here at this little hill. And right in the center nearly is where that tooth, that line goes. Wow, that looks huge. That looks really... It looks really big. I wonder if this one needs to be bigger. So here's that hill, and then here is. See, if I over exaggerate that, I use. I've got this other one over here I could do that with. Uh, if I over exaggerate this, and I look at that arch, and I put a line there, and I put a line over here, you know, those angles, I'm exaggerating those angles. Uh, same way over here. This angle does this. This one does this. Um, this angle is steeper over here. This one's almost the same as that one. But right in the center is the middle of that tooth. And over here, um, in the center of this one, is that crease for the separation of that tooth. Now, this probably comes down further over here than I think it does. And then right there in the middle. That's probably about right. Now I've got to leave enough room down here for a little glimpse of the teeth to be shown on the bottom. There we go. And then this is, this tooth is up like this, angled over here like that, a little bit. That probably needs to come back this way. Okay, need to erase that. Getting, getting way too dark right there, too quickly. Okay, let's do this. We'll move that up just a little bit. Push that dark recessed area there. Now I want to look at the teeth on the bottom. And just make a determination here. here I'm, I'm looking at this negative shape. It looks like a little, little box right here. And then I'm looking at the negative shape right there. So, a little long area, and, uh, you know, I, I can't tell if that is just uh, some horizontal lights, some highlights in there. Uh, I took this reference photo, and I didn't use a flash. We're using natural light outside. But still, that can happen from time to time where you'll get, like, a little bit of a um, glint of light, you know, that just creeps in there. Um, my point is this. I don't want, I don't think that I want to have these separations right here where it looks like that's a tooth, that's a tooth, that's a tooth, because I don't think that's the case. I think those are um, reflections off of the teeth. So I could probably choose to leave that out, those reflections. I don't, I don't think it's complimentary to leave those in. Okay, this tooth actually needs to go probably up just a little. There's something I'm not liking. Maybe it needs to do that and then angled over. There we go. Oh, uh, thank you, uh, Hasib. Um, over there on uh, YouTube Live. Okay. Let's go down here. See this. I think I think this side comes up just slightly higher 
at least from my vantage point that I'm looking at, than the other side. You know, I think probably I'd have to look at it again. But the angle, I think I'm probably standing over this way, uh, offset just a little bit as I'm taking the photo. Um, due to what I'm seeing here with... I really think there's more information being shown. Uh, this is longer. The side over here is longer, I think. It looks like to me. I'd have to measure it, but that may be the other reason why that's more offset than what it, uh, what we think in our mind it should be. So that little separation right there is right in here, it looks like. Probably not going to draw that in, but just to kind of know where that is in our mind is helpful. So this goes down, I think, a little bit farther. I think this is up a little bit higher right in there. Okay. All right, and then that line, I think, is distracting. Uh, this is a very, very diffused edge right here on uh, the lip. You're not going to really see that too much. There we go. Okay, now I can go ahead and tap on this a little bit to remove most of that just so that it's very very faint and I can see it enough to where it can guide me a little bit maybe I should zoom in here a little bit more uh, that probably would have been helpful <laughs> um, so you can see this better okay but yeah if I just lift on this and then move that sticky putty around. Get some new surface there to use um, so that it stays very, very tacky. Then I can take most of that off there. There we go. Okay. All right. So I think that I think that's enough to where I can see it. Probably a little darker than what I want, but it, I mean it's fine. All right. So now I want to make a decision. I want to look at this and determine. I've got all my. I should say this. So I've got all of my um, portrait. My biggest portrait uh, collection of favorites out here. <laughs> so these are typically my favorite um, colored pencil portrait colors. Some core pencils here. All right. And I want to look at that and figure out one of the darkest ones, and I, I, I probably already know what I'm going to go with, but and you may already know too if you know me and if you followed some of the things that we do. Probably going to use Caput Mortem. Um, in fact, we are going to use Caput Mortem. So let me sharpen that. Okay, so now what I want to do. And we're using a very non-absorbent surface, so we have to remember that. Um, but if we're used to using sanded paper, then the differences in pastel mat and sanded paper, uh, one of the biggest differences is that pastel mat will not hold as many layers as um, sanded paper. So we have, we have to be judicious in what we're putting down. So the thing that I want to do is I want to look for all, I want to look at all the areas that are the darkest shadows first. And 
establish those, and then move away from those as well. So I'm going to draw this. I'm going to recreate my line drawing, but at the same time, I'm going to also uh, look at the shadows. Um, Hasib is asking for me to zoom in a little bit more. I'll zoom in a little bit. I can't zoom in a whole lot because, um, I've tried that before and the, uh, focus starts going out of, uh, the camera can't keep the focus sometimes. So let me know if that happens, guys. Let me know if that's better. There we go. Okay, now let's look here. So I want to reestablish uh, a line drawing as I go through this. And I, can, I still can change things a little bit, but at the same time, I want to be uh, more careful than I would be if I were using... Um, sanded paper. And I'm going to see if it, now that I zoomed in, I can I can get a little closer to it so I can see it better. Um, again, the angle is always best for you guys to be able to see it. It's not quite as good for me because I'm not looking straight down on it or even at an angle that is the best. But, I mean, it works. <laughs> uh, okay. So this angle right here. Doesn't leave me a lot of room for that tooth. I think that that area came in too much. I I try to be a little careful um during this part of the process, uh, especially on pastel mat, because I'm going to do I'm going to do myself a lot of favors by being careful in this area. Uh Somia, no, I'm using you're asking if I'm using a black pencil. I'm using Caput Mortem by Polychromos. That's the pencil I'm using right now. Uh so it's this grayish purple color cuz I'm looking for a dark color. Um, Hasib is saying, sir, the color is red, but you are using a black one. Yeah, so, um, so I'm using Caput Mortem, so it's not black. Um, the color, for the most part, is a reddish color. Yes, you're correct. Um, but I'm not going to put the red down yet. I'm going to establish the line drawing a little bit more. And then the second thing I'm going to do is start working on the shadows. Uh, because we can use, we can do the red later. We don't have to do the red right away. Hope that makes sense. Okay. Let's go right in here. Okay. Now, this area, this gets really dark right in here. And that tooth comes over here and touches the lip. And then we're on the other side of the inner portion of the lip. Come down here and change directions. And there is a little bit of a line right in there. Although that is not always the most compelling thing to draw, um, because sometimes it will look like an outline, and I don't, I don't want an outline. Okay, so right here, and over here, this is the corners. Corner over here is darker right there, only because of that little funny, weird area where the skin is actually, you know. We can look at that again. I hope you guys can see that. The skin is actually um, 
sticking, you know, top lip sticking to the bottom lip is what I'm interpreting. And so because of that, I don't want to draw that. I want to smooth that out and uh, pretend like that's not there. Um, because I just, I just don't, th that that's an in-between shot and I don't think it's, I th it, it could make the, make the mouth look a little funny, I think, in a drawing. I guess is my point. There's some teeth back behind there. So it's darker right here. That little area there. And down here. And then that whole area is going to be darker. Based on our interpretation of what is going on with with the um, mouth over there. The skin on the mouth. Okay, and then, now here's something that I I usually do. I uh, if I'm not real sure, and I'm not real sure this time where the bottom of this tooth is. Um, I I know it's just a study, and so it doesn't. It's not going to matter a whole lot. But I'm going to draw this tooth coming down uh, farther down here than what I think it may be because it'll give me a little bit of wiggle room. A little bit of the gum line is showing right there. Sometimes that's a, a key thing to grab. Uh, but I don't want that to be dark. So I'm going to do that. Take that away a little bit. And uh, draw a little bit of that negative space down in here. Right there. Okay. And this whole area is a little bit darker. There's a little bit of a characteristic there going on with the tooth on this side that I probably want to capture only because that might be something that is unique to this individual um, a little point of recognizability okay go straight across and then it comes up just a little bit there we go and then over here, same thing. I want to go down a little bit uh, further down than what I even think. Uh, Hasib is asking where I'm from. I'm from the uh, United States of America in um, Ohio. Okay, let's draw this little part in here. There we go. I think it's cool that we can connect online like this from different parts of the world. It's kind of neat. Okay. And then this area is recessed a little bit, and there's teeth in there, but it's still a little bit of a shadow. And over here... There is uh, this goes nearly to the middle of that tooth. Hey, Ramona, how are you? Good to see you over here. Okay. We got the old crew here. We got Melanie, Ramona, Linda, maybe others. Okay, let's go up just a little bit. Makes me feel at home when you guys are out here, <laughs> seriously. Um, I 
I'm going to look at that on the screen a little bit. Sometimes that helps just to look at it over there. Okay. Now, this top lip, if I follow that negative shape, you may have trouble seeing it now. Um, I don't want to zoom out too much, but that top lip kind of comes up a little bit before it comes back down. And I think this comes down even more right in here. Right there. <laughs> uh, Kelly. Um, <laughs> Kelly is asking, is it just her that can't see the full reference photo? No, I can't please everyone, so <laughs> you can't see the full reference photo. Uh, someone else was asking that I zoom in, so that's the <laughs> reason for that, so sorry. Um, if you guys want me to, I'll zoom back out a little bit. So You can, you can get the entire reference photo, though, Kelly. Um, over there at, I think there's a link in the description down below, um, that you can look at it there or download it over at sharpenedartist.com slash, um, live streams. Okay. Let's go right in here. Just getting a little bit of this um, indication of where things are there. Yeah, you're welcome, Kelly. Thank you. Thanks for coming out here. Appreciate it. All right. And I'll stick that back here. And put a little bit of value in here just to suggest a little bit of shading. Not, not much uh, for right now. And this value over here, there's not going to be any kind of line separation there, um, but just a, a value separation. There's like on the other side, I will zoom out to show you that, or maybe I'll just show you here, although I wrote on this a little bit from earlier, but there is a definite line down here of a separate value, just like we see up here. There's a line that creates a little bit of a darker value right there. That's not always the most compelling thing to do, though, on a drawing. Sometimes it works on a photo, but not on a drawing. So if there's any way for me to taper that, you know, and, and what I mean by that, let, let me just explain that very quickly. When I'm talking about tapering a value, so if so this is a line, right? That's a line. That's a line too, um, but so this is a thicker line, right? But if I if I add more strokes on the other side of this line, and I just keep moving uh, away from that edge, then what I've done is I've created a uh, a value that is separated. If I put this in a box and I said okay this area here's a value now the white area is also a value so instead of having a harsh line and then some kind of lighter value beside it what I've done then is I made the value the same and then I'm tapering it I'm coming away from that line and making it um, lighter as I move away from it. Let's say I go over here and start that line. Make it even darker. Well, then I want to taper that area into a lighter area. So it's darker in one spot and then it moves away from that spot and it gets lighter as it travels away from it. Our, our eyes, our minds, that's probably, that's probably incredibly small. You probably can't even see that. But our minds deal with that a lot easier than they do just a line to separate something. And so this line that I created here around this part of the lip, I probably want to get rid of as I keep moving through the piece. I hope that made sense. Okay, I'm going to 
Same thing here with the corner of this mouth. I guess I'll show it here. Same thing here. This dark, dark area is separated by a lighter area on top, the top lip. So that bottom lip, as it moves away from that recessed area, and I come out here, I'm going to taper that dark value away from that edge. And the way to do that is what I just explained over there on the side of the paper. So as I move away from that, then I am uh, able to, to depict that light no longer is over there in that dark area, but light begins to hit some of this area right there in the upper lip. So, and the, and the reason why that's important is we're thinking about the way that light is traveling, right? Um, light is, is the active agent. Uh, shadows aren't. Shadows are just the absence of light. And so, anytime that I'm trying to figure out what to do with my drawing, I'm trying to figure out how these uh, shadows are working then the better thing for me to think about is what is the light doing? What it, how is the light affecting uh, the value? Because light is what is, you know, something is being cast, and that's creating uh, the shadow. So the light is being cast on an object. That object, then, is creating a shadow. And... So I have to figure out where, where that shadow begins. And then where it ends, because the object that is casting that shadow won't cast it forever. It doesn't go all the way down, you know, down the, the face here because the mouth uh, jets outward, you know. The mouth is like a, it's kind of like a water bottle. It's curved, you know, it comes out away from uh, the uh, face, the head. So the more that I think about those things, the easier it will become to depict some of those things. Okay. Now there's some areas I probably want to get. Okay, let me see here. That that just seems really like a a long way down there to to uh, draw that bottom edge of the bottom lip may not be right. Okay, and then let's stick this part up here. There's a little bit of value right in here, and we'll move away from that line that we're that I'm interpreting as a line on the bottom. Of course, you can't see that. I'm, looking over there at my reference and you're not able to see it. Okay. I'm going to have to zoom back out just a little bit, Hasib, so uh, so that we can see what we're doing here. Okay. So yeah, I can get rid of that line just a little bit by adding more value over here. And early on, when you're working on pastel mat, um, for me at least, I try not to let it bother me that there is this graininess or grittiness with uh, the surface. Um, I try to just overlook that for a while because it's just it's going to be that way. It's just going to be that way. Okay, so let me look again at the uh, the mouth, uh, the upper lip. Let's take a look at the upper lip and determine where the light is hitting everything. So it's mostly hitting over here on this side. And this side over here is more in a shadow. I hope you, hope you can see that. This is a highlight over here, highlight. Over here, a highlight on the, the bottom lip. But there's a highlight on the top lip, and that makes sense. The top lip, um, when we come to the color of the lip, is 
darker typically than the bottom lip because it's curved under. It's starting to curve under and be shaded by uh, the flesh of the upper part of the mouth. So this is lighter. This over here, this part is darker. So I wanted to pick that in my, uh, my drawing here. Now see, sometimes this happens too on pastel matte that I'm using a very light touch, but it didn't look like it. It looked like I just pressed really hard right there, and I did not do that. Um, I'm using a very light touch over here. I'm having to kind of contort my body. Usually I don't draw this way if I'm... You know, if I'm not worried about uh, showing it on camera, I'll turn the reference a little bit and turn my drawing as well. Um, but that is very dark right there, some of those lines that I made, and I don't like that. So I can get rid of that. Just use this sticky putty, tap it just a little bit, and I'll go ahead and sharpen this pencil again. All right, so I want to start down here and show that that's darker. It's darker down there than anywhere else, logically, right? Because this is underneath the very edge of where we can see the bottom of the lip start to vanish from our viewpoint. And we've got a little bit of texture right there in the lip. I don't want to lose that. I'll grab that real quick there. But then as I move away from this edge I can still show that this value is shifting and changing into a lighter value. There we go. And then up here as well. I just have to be very um, slow at laying down the pencil up here keep having to remind myself that I'm not on sanded paper. This pastel mat is uh, very different in that regard. It's going to show more, uh, so I want to be a little more delicate with it. Okay, now I can add a little bit of darker lines right in here now, only because I've got a darker area up there now. Okay, now I want to wrap this around this value that I started creating. And as I move across the lips, I'm going to get lighter, right? I want the value to be lighter than what it is right now. So this makes it easier if we're just using a monochromatic kind of view. So, Sergi Man's asking, how would I compare layering method from uh, pastel mat to sanded paper? Well, on pastel mat, um, no, I mean, typically you're not going to be able to get, for the most part, you're not going to be able to get as many layers down on the paper. And so, if that's the case, then I need to um, quickly get to my local color and you know not dilly dally around and work on a bunch of values uh, right now I am working on values and I'm not worried as much about the color this color will work you know for um, what we're doing but on pastel mat I need to get quickly to that area where I've got you know the local color that I'm working in and on sanded paper I can take my time and I can build up more and more, more and more layers and I can have a lot of subtle little shifts um, in, uh, in the colors but on pastel matte I'm going to quickly run out of tooth 
if I keep doing that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Sergi man, I love the way he puts things. Yeah, I will bulldoze my way into color <laughs> a lot quicker. Uh, I love that. Yeah, and um and one of the things with uh there's a little bit of texture here in the in that skin and the skin of the lips right in there that we could capture. Uh one of the things with uh, pastel matte that I love. I don't always do this. I've used it quite a bit lately, but um, uh, is you can use solvent or water if you're using oil-based pencils like Polychromos. But you can use uh, a an agent to a liquid agent to move uh, the pencil layers around, and it will it will uh, create like this watercolor effect on your surface and it's just an amazing thing um, you don't have to do that we're not going to do it this time I want to show how you can just use pastel matte as the delicate surface that it is and create um, your rendering uh, just by using the pencils themselves you know you don't always have to use all kinds of um, other things with what what we're doing okay now let's see get this area right in here now this um, looking at this area right here I'm coming down way too far there I just noticed that not sure why that happened, so I can move that over right there. Sometimes it's hard to look at every everything. Oh yeah, I'm I'm uh Looking at what you uh, what you said there, Sergi man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's a different kind of look uh, for sure, and it uh, it's kind of fun. I mean, it's and it speeds up the process a little bit as well when you're using uh, water and or solvent um, with oil based pencils primarily on pastel matte uh, but there are ways of rendering without it as well okay that's a little bit dark that's okay for right now I want to push that out here and and then I'll come back in there oh well, Carol <laughs> Carol says she, she forgot um, uh, you know, it's so funny, Carol. I looked up at the time. I thought, you forgot. We just started. And uh, actually, I guess we've been out here for about 50 minutes. This is so weird. I, re I actually really thought, I really felt like we've only been out here a few minutes. That is just so strange how that happens. It's not strange to uh, the non-artists uh, in your life, your non-artist family in your life usually knows exactly how much time you spend on uh, creating art. <laughs> we as artists, we forget, but they usually know exactly how much time we spend. Okay, let's do this. And so I've got a, a pretty good value separation right in there. Uh, we extend that out just a little bit right here. And then what we'll do, because I don't want to confuse those values right there, is I will use a different color uh, for the inside of the mouth. It's going to be darker over here as this moves up. There is some texture right in there on that.
<laughs> yeah, Carol, I totally get that. <laughs> Carol's talking about how long she spent in her studio and uh, her husband um, reminded her about uh, one of those essentials, food. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so a little bit of texture right in here, and I'm looking at where that separation in the in the tooth is, and then these lines, these key lines over here, are just to the left of that. So I can suggest those. Would it matter if I put those over here? No, it wouldn't. Why? Because it's lips. No one's going to look and say, oh, Alessandra never had creases in her lips right there. They're over this way or whatever, you know. That just doesn't happen. People don't usually um, pay much attention to, you know, some of those uh, texture uh, things in lips. And these these will look a little dark, and that's okay for right now. Uh, now, sometimes what these um, little lines in the lips do is they will, uh, like this one right here in particular, it creates a little indentation right there, but then the surface around it is also indented just a little bit. And so this is the reason why we have this lighter value and then a darker one on the other side. So we have a lighter value over here, and then there's a darker one, I mean a, a darker value over here and a lighter one over here. So everything around that is going to be not quite as uh, as dark uh, as right there beside it. Um, sometimes it's kind of fun just to put these in early like this. Uh, they'll look better later on as we keep, you know, moving and progressing through the piece. And when we start adding more color, then what we'll do is we will... Um, we'll be able to show some of the dimensional curve in the lips as well, but then we'll show some of those textural um, areas on, uh, on the lips. Okay, there's even some up here, but we just haven't drawn those in yet. Okay, now... Uh, one last thing that I really want to do before we leave this is uh, it's a little bit darker. Okay, I want to use that darker, um, or not darker really, but a different color <coughs> pencil. And let me see if this is enough of a difference. Yeah, it is. So sienna in uh, the light fast line. So I just want to add that in here to show a difference a little bit in these teeth up here and this part of the mouth. And there's a lot of purple in those teeth is what it looks like to me. Okay. Uh, and then what we could do also that back down is show that little bit of shadow that is shading uh, the upper part of the teeth. Um, we don't want to leave that out because it'll look like someone's shining a flashlight up on someone's teeth or something. Uh, the lip is shading the teeth. So we want to make sure that we that we show that. And it's going to be darker right there at the edges of those vertical separations in the teeth than it will be uh, anywhere else in this upper area, right? The reason for that is because teeth um, are slightly curved as well, and so they're going to wrap around, and they're going to be darker in those, in those corners than anywhere else. Same thing over here. This tooth back here is going to be 
darker than any of the teeth in front because again it's like like a water bottle or anything that's curved it's wrapping around um, the this part of the face it sticks out from the rest of the face just slightly but it still does that but we don't want to pretend it doesn't even if we erase some of this later that's fine and again this is not the color that you know we're married to or anything like that but it just it does leave us um, with a shadow and some kind of separation in the value but it tells us okay that top lip is shading the teeth because light doesn't travel there the same way right okay push this all the way down same way over here all right there is that little separation right there where a little bit of the gum is suggested right there but it is darker right here towards that area where the teeth are um, separated and it's going to be darker up here logically uh, and then it tapers again just like over here what we talked about earlier just tapers away from that area right okay now I should probably say since we are getting close to wrapping up maybe I'll zoom back in here a little bit more um, that if if you want to keep following along with us we're going to do this uh, tomorrow night uh, and we do it Monday Tuesday and Wednesday at 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time Eastern Daylight Time so if you joined us today about an hour ago um, live then that's when we start uh, so we'd love to have you join us again well right now I'm just using uh, Sienna Linda um, because I'm not I'm not too worried about the color uh, too much yet. I'm going to use some purples and blues uh, more than likely on those teeth. Well, I, I will use that and maybe some grays. Um, maybe some yellows, some ochres. Right there in the center. It's a little darker. And then it moves away. And this tooth over here is going to be darker anyway than any of the other teeth. Um, because we're on the shadow side, right? Over here. This area back here, if there's teeth there, and I think there is, still going to be darker. Oh, cool. <laughs> cool, Car Carol. So, and she set reminders now. <laughs> awesome. Good deal. Uh, that'll be fun. All right. So, and then this moves over towards the center. The center is always going to be brighter. And then back here, because of that thing again where it wraps around, right? So, over here, it's gonna, going to be darker as it wraps back around. Not quite that dark, I don't think. That was a little bit too dark. Uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Push that down. Put a little bit more in there. Although, yeah. The, the nice thing about what I was going to say is although um, we're going to change that color though anyway but you can stain you know areas in your drawing stain areas you can create a little bit of 
uh, a stained um, portion in the um, in the drawing, and we just I'll just demonstrate that down here uh, where it will tint the area. It'll you know sort of leave a little bit of a stained color, and if you remove it, then you can go back over the top of it with a different color. And that's just a fun thing to do. So I'm not at all um, married to any of the that that I just put down. And I can just come in here and remove it. Right? Take that away. Now one thing, one thing using Pastel Matte is it uh, has a very, very stiff, rigid tooth on it. And so the more that I... Um, you know, put something down and lift it off. It so it just stained that area. And I can come back in here with my Caput Mortem, and I'm filling in the tooth a little bit in certain areas. And now I have an opportunity to go on top of this, and it can start to look more and more smooth the more that I do that. So same thing is true up here in this mouth area that I've been working on. I could go ahead and take that color off like for instance on the teeth and it would stain it just enough to give me a little bit of an underpainting right a little bit of shadow for any colors that I put on top I don't have to protect the tooth as much on pastel matte but what I have to remember is <clears throat> um, I don't have as much tooth to work with um, but the advantage, though, on pastel mat is if I decide something's just, you know, totally off or wrong, I can change it. I can totally just, you know, change it. I can erase it. Uh, or I can just press harder with my pencils. And sometimes what it'll do, and hopefully we'll be able to, to uh, demonstrate this throughout this piece, um, what it will do is it will dig up some of the subsequent layers if you're using a hard pencil and it will replace those with uh, something that is uh, more true to the color that you want you replace it with the, the layer of uh, pencil you're putting down it's kind of a weird thing but it uh, it does work it does do that okay before I go though I want to uh, indicate a little bit about the skin around around here and what's going on here with with the skin around the mouth. So I want to clearly define where those corners are, and then and then I think I want to use that sienna again, and I'll start over here. And I want to just extend this shadow area um, because it's recessed in this area. And so there is a darker value over here. Oh, no, Hasib. Uh, Hasib's asking if it's completed. No, no, no. We're, um, we're going to add color. And we're going to try to get as close to the colors in this reference as possible to be able to depict something that looks like a full color demonstration of a mouth. So we just started. We'll be continuing tomorrow uh, with this demonstration and uh, adding color um, tomorrow. Yeah, this is this is just the beginning of what we're doing here. Keep starting in that darkest area and then expanding um, the application layers to other areas around the mouth here. And I'm going to erase some of this, but for right now I want to add as much as possible. And we'll draw with the eraser here in a moment, you know. 
some people refer to it as that. We'll uh, uh, correct some things with the eraser. Take some things back. Take it away because we don't want, you know, we're trying to add more than we need right now. And in order to stain the, the area, I'm going to turn my, my arm just a little bit, my hand, get it in a different direction, hit it from a different direction. Mm, if you've not tried this paper, you've got to do it. It's just so fun. Such a good paper. Okay, same thing over here. One class must be on perspective. I'll see if it's saying. Yeah, so we yeah, so we just started, you know, and we're um we're wanting to build up uh the shadows first, a road map for what we're gonna be doing, uh, and then we're going to add more value as we progress through the piece. Uh, but more importantly, we're going to start adding color, Hasib. And the color is going to, um, you know, be representational, hopefully, right? We're going to try to uh, show how to create uh, this mouth in colored pencil with color. So... Okay, get rid of this. I'm going to add a more value over here on this side so that, because this is a shadow, so we can depict which area is going to be darker. This is going to be the darker side. And so it's kind of important that we do that. Uh, and then it starts all the way up here. So I could, I, 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 usually what I try to do is I'll try to start from the darkest area. And I went way too far that way, and we'll correct that in a moment. But I want to start from the darkest area and then extend that area. And then hit that in a different direction with that linear stroke. In different direction still. I come back the other way. And we sort of want to, even at this stage with just this uh, very limited colors that we've got on here, we want to obliterate uh, this line separation over here. We don't want a big difference in uh, the line of of where the values are, um, especially when it comes to the bottom lip. We don't want that. Uh, top lip, we can have more of a separation. Yeah, Hasib. Um, yep. I mean, that's that's essentially what we're doing is we're we're looking at this um, from uh, you know from the from the start to the finish. We're not we're not just launching into it in the middle, right? So we're trying to show some of the the process here. Okay, so let's do this. We'll come back in here and take some of this away I don't want to tap very very lightly I don't want to take it all away but some of it and we're probably gonna put some more back down later as well obviously uh, talking about shadows even See what that looks like. Okay, not bad for right now. Yeah, and uh, it may have sort of this dirty look, muddy look, whatever, and that's okay. I'm 
the more I keep using that sticky putty in this area, you know, if I look at that, it becomes um, dirty with the pencil color. And that's a good thing, really, in a lot of ways, because then it's not taking off quite as much, but it's taking off enough and helping to just stain the area in certain spots, which is nice. Okay, if I come closer over here. Yeah. I mean, I have to I have to limit this a little bit. I don't want to go all the way over to um you know, the cheek. <laughs> so Hasib is saying how to sketch a hand in simply way, sir. I think there's a little bit of a language barrier there, Hasib. I'm not sure what you're what you're saying exactly, so I apologize. Okay. Go down here. I just want to put a little bit an indication here of a darker value that is um, tapering a little bit but is a little bit darker than what I've got down right now over here there we go Okay. And push that pencil into There we go. Push it into the lip a little bit. <clears throat> Hasib, uh you're saying you're confused with drawing nose. Um Okay. I, I'm not I'm sorry, I'm not sure what what you're referring to exactly. Now th this is subtle and I, I'm gonna go ahead and uh do this, but you know, I don't know, I'm just getting carried away, I guess, and that tends to happen. But um <laughs> most of you guys are artists, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um but what I wanna do is um I want to put a little bit of value up here above the lip. It it will just give us a little more uh, context for everything that we're drawing. Uh, there's a lighter area up there, and there's a darker area in that flesh, in the upper lip. And if we don't point out some of those things right now, then uh, there's a chance that we'll, um, you know, forget about that. And we'll think of this whole area as being just like one value. There we go. So I'm going to push this over here. This is the lighter value that is very closely akin to... Uh, the top of the lip. Right around the mouth as we get very close to the edge of where the top of the lip line begins, um, then it gets lighter right there. And that's the case often when we look at lips. So Hasib, you're saying nose from front view to draw nose I'm confused to draw nose from front view to draw nose. Uh, Hasib, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if you're um, if you're just making a general comment about that. Maybe you are, so, um, or if you're asking a question, I'm not sure. Okay, let's go down here.
it's a little bit darker right there. It's going to be, we're not going to really work too much in that area where the filtrum is, this little separation between um, the, uh, the lips, the top lip, but it is usually typically a little bit darker right there. But we're going to remove most of this anyway. We're just trying to stain the paper a little bit. That's all. Okay, so then over here, this moves down just a little bit. Right in here. That's the other nice thing about this paper is that I can use uh, scrubbing, you know. I can I can go back and forth. And I don't, you know, a lot of times when I'm on cotton paper, um, you know, I'm going to go in one direction with my stroke. But on a stiff paper like this, a non-absorbent paper, I can uh, I can go back and forth. I can I can do that type of motion, that scrubbing kind of motion, and uh, it it works out just fine. Cause I'm not destroying the tooth of the paper when I do that, like I would on other some other papers. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you, you're, you're, I'll see if you're at, you're asking me why I'm apologizing, I, and then I apologize again. Uh, we just have a language barrier. I'm not, I'm not sure if you're asking questions or if you're making comments at this point. So I'm apologizing for not understanding. Is why I was apologizing. Okay. All right, so let me take a look. All right. And, uh, hmm. At some point, I'm going to have to stop tonight, right? <laughs> um, there's just one other, one other thing, a couple other little things I just want to do right here, and then we will stop. It is darker right here, should be. So I want to do that. This comes down that way a little bit more. There's that. And then this goes this way and then back up, I think. All right. This is all nearly one value that is straight across. We come back over here. And we'll go back up right there. And then this is a very dark value over here. So when we look at the value range, um, then really the darkest value is probably... It, it's probably not in the corner. It could be. It could be right here in this corner, you know. But it also could be over here. I think it's probably over here. Where um, we're in a shadow. We're on the darkest side of the mouth. And we're unable to see past uh, all this area because it's going back further into the mouth. So it could be there or here. you know. But anyway, it, do it doesn't really matter a whole lot. All these are kind of competing values, right? Right in there. Um, so... That's just, you know, something that we'll keep thinking about as we, um, you know, as we progress through the piece. And, um, you know, it doesn't, doesn't need to be something that 
you get hung up about, even if you made those values the same, because this area, logically speaking, this area over here on the corner can be equal to this area over here, but it could also make sense that this area in this corner um, is darker because it's in a shadow over there. So, uh, and then if I made uh, the areas back here, like right in here, over in here, if I made those in this area especially just as dark as the corners of the mouth, uh, then there wouldn't be any problem with that. It's not like it would become an eyesore or anything like that. The thing that I wouldn't, I don't think I would want to do is I don't think I would want the value right up here between the teeth, right here between the separation of the teeth. I wouldn't want that as dark as the corners, right? Because um, then that that wouldn't uh, make as much sense, uh, much sense logically, right? So, okay. I think we're going to go ahead and stop. Um, and we'll go ahead and call it a night. So, hope you guys enjoyed that again. If you want to download the reference and follow along or draw this yourself, I would love to see that as well if you choose to do that. You can go over to sharpenedartist.com slash um, live streams and scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and you'll get the the download option there for this particular mouth that we're drawing uh, so all right i am going to go ahead and stop <laughs> uh, thanks guys for watching i uh, really appreciate it and hopefully you'll join tomorrow uh, where we will pick this up again and we'll start adding color um, this next time so and that'll be a lot of fun till then stay sharp bye bye